Well, good morning and welcome to worship at the Salvation Army Oakden. My name's Major Quentin Castle and it's been 146 days since we had our first case of coronavirus in Australia. We've come a long way, haven't we? Uh, and although we're still working hard to keep the virus under wraps, uh, we, are, we are slowly opening up things and uh, very soon we'll be beginning our, our worship together at the Oakton Salvation Army. Now, to begin with, for, for a while, it won't be as we used to do it. Uh, we're going to start having uh, home groups. So we're going to be gathering together throughout July and possibly beyond uh, into to groups within within homes. So stay stay tuned for, for news on, on that and where you can you can attend. Uh, for those who aren't a part of our, our immediate Oakton community, um, I hope that your places of worship will be opening up soon. And if they're not, I encourage you to begin your own home group. It's not too hard. Um, if you've got a few friends you know who'd like to come over and, and spend a time of worship, um, give them a call, bring them over. Um, pick some favorite songs to sing. Uh, go online to, to find a study. Or um, you know, most often, if, if you're a church guy, you might have a study book of your own floating around the place, but it's not too hard to put something together. But the main thing is that you come together and you pray and you, you share from the scripture together and reflect on the things that God is, is speaking to you through the scriptures and also the way he's speaking to you through your life. So I encourage you to do that because we can, here in Australia, we can gather together in homes uh, under, under a certain number. So look into that. Anyway, uh, this morning we have a special guest. Uh, we're going to have uh, Captain Aaron Stobie, who's going to be our, our guest preacher this morning. So you're going to get a, a break from me uh, today. But we're going to have the other things that we normally have. Um, we've got some great songs that we're going to be singing. Uh, but most of all, the Lord is with us. The God is with us. No matter where we worship, he's always uh, joining us as we lift up our hearts and lift up our songs uh, to praise him for the good things that he has done. A call to worship. God has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Micah 6 verse 8. Christian songwriter Lamar Boschman said, don't let life affect your worship. Let your worship affect your life. And I pray that, that you will be moved this morning, that your heart will be open and that there'll be a new sense of joy within you as you worship. As we sing this wonderful hymn of the Christian church, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
This next song is known by a whole generation of people as the Mr. Bean Church song. Of all creatures of our God and King. Alleluia. 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 It means praise the Lord in Hebrew. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please praise the Lord. Like join in the worship and, and praise of the creation as we sing these wonderful words. Don't think of Mr. Bean. I've probably put that image in your head now. But, you know, open up to the Lord as you sing the Alleluia's and try and avoid doing the funny voice. Let's sing. Well, right now we're going to be moving into a time of prayer. We're going to sing that song. He giveth more grace as our burdens grow greater. Corey Ten Boom said this about prayer. Any concern too small to be turned into a prayer is too small to be made into a burden. God wants us to bring all our needs to him. When we feel the pressure, God wants us to come to him to share those troubles and that pressure with him. But not just when we're under the pump. God also wants us to come and have relationship with him. Even when we're not 
concerned about something, even when we're, we're virtually worry-free. He wants us to, to know him and to be known by him. And he wants us to know that we love him. The way that we develop love with another person is, is through spending time with them, is by, by talking to them, to sharing our feelings, our hopes and dreams with them. And God wants us to do that with him. Prayer is the way which we build intimacy with our God. Let's sing this wonderful song about, about the, the strength and courage and, and power that God gives us when we are struggling before we come into a time of prayer with him. <laughs> Let us pray. It is good to be together. God, on these screens with these people, together listening for your voice, united by your spirit. In this time of worship, tell us about your kingdom of kindness so that we could seek it. Show us your justice. We want to walk with you humbly, closely, daily. Amen.
Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Well, as I said earlier, we have a special guest today, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Captain Aaron Stobie, who is the Corps Officer at the Campbelltown Corps. Now, some of you would know Aaron already and his his wife, uh, Captain Lauren Stobie, and they've been at the, the Campbelltown Corps for a couple of years now, uh, and their Corps is a very good friend of our Corps, and uh, both of us have had a bit to do with each other in the past, and we look forward to having a future where we continue to network with our friends uh, at the Campbelltown Salvation Army. All the way back in 2001 and 2003, I had the opportunity of being involved in something called the Victorian State School Spectacular. And it was an opportunity that I never would have had if it wasn't for a teacher at my school who encouraged me to audition because she knew I, I loved music, she knew I loved to sing, and she genuinely felt that I might have an opportunity to be involved in the State School Spectacular. So we looked at all that I needed to do. I needed to fill out paperwork and apply to get an audition time. And they gave that to me and said, come and bring two songs we want you to sing. There'll be a panel there. And so the audition happened and I kind of left feeling rather relieved, pretty excited and pumped that I'd been to what was probably my first audition and kind of relieved that I wasn't feeling terrified anymore about what was happening. A few weeks later, the phone rang and my mum answered the phone and she called me and she said, someone's on the phone for you. And I answered and they said, we'd love to offer you a position as a soloist in the Victorian State School Spectacular. And my mind was absolutely blown away because I couldn't believe that the result of my audition was that I got to be involved in this incredible show. I mean, we're talking about a choir of three and a half thousand, a dance troupe of 500, an orchestra of 150. And in fact, of all the many thousands that auditioned for a solo position, there were only 31 positions that were granted. And so I was totally blown away. In fact, I still think about it now, and I go, how the heck did that happen? And I want to suggest that one of the reasons that this happened and how I had this and that one of the reasons that I had this opportunity was that I actually applied to get an audition. Now, I loved the Lord then and I, I was serving him and I was seeking him. But I can pretty much guarantee that if I had not done my part in filling out the paperwork and requesting an audition, then he wouldn't magically make an audition time appear for me. No, there was a requirement that I actually did something in order to get this audition time. And I want to read a passage, a couple of passages of scripture now that kind of tell us about a response that was required by someone else. And so if you have your Bibles with you now, I'd love for you to join me and turn to the book of Matthew in the New Testament. And it's Matthew 14 verses 22 through to 33. 
And I'm reading from the New International Version. And in this version, it's titled, Jesus Walks on the Water. That's Matthew 14, verses 22 through to 33. It commences at 22 by saying, Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch on the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. And I wonder if you've heard this quote, this phrase, if you want to walk on water, then you've got to get out of the boat. We see here as we read these passages of scripture that in order for Peter to walk on the water, he physically had to get out of the boat. And I fear that sometimes we go through life wanting to do things like, for example, as an illustration, walk on the water, but we're not actually prepared to respond with obedience to the promptings and the callings and actually get out of the boat. And I can tell you this with absolute certainty. If you do not get out of the boat, let me rephrase, if I do not get out of the boat, then we're not going to be walking on water. God is not going to make something magically appear without a response from us. He calls us to follow him. He says, take up your cross and follow me. He said to Peter, here, come to me. Not just stay in the boat and I'll see what I can do. No, come is the encouragement, the command from Jesus. It required a physical reaction, a physical movement. It required something of Peter in order for him to walk on the water as Jesus was, recognising that Jesus is the Son of God, in order for Peter to walk on water, he needed to get out of the boat. And I think this is a really important principle for us as we go through life journeying with the Lord. He is often calling us to do things. He is calling us to change our ways. He is calling us to become more like him. And as we do that, it requires a response. We actually have to get out of the boat. And I don't know about you, but I've been really contemplating this whole COVID-19 space where we find ourselves experiencing a new type of normal where we are actually given an opportunity to get out of the boat and try something new where we're given an opportunity to fling wide open the doors of our church buildings and march out on our knees in faithful prayer and intercession to go and impact our community as we work for the Lord and partner with him in his mission of ministry to a broken world. We've been given the opportunity to get out of the boat. 
We've been given the opportunity to try something new. We've been given the opportunity to really seek his heart and say, God, what are you wanting us to do during this time? How are you wanting us to lead your people? How are you wanting us to be the people of God in this space and moving forward? And I truly believe that we have been given some incredible opportunities to kind of hit the pause button to really reflect on what it is that God is wanting from us and then moving forward and stepping out in faith so that we can actually do those things that he is revealing to us so that we can actually be the people of God that he is calling us and he has created us to be. But sometimes... And I'm sure I'm not talking about anyone who is watching this today. Sometimes we don't want to get out of the boat. Sometimes we don't want to move out of the boat because, hey, it's pretty familiar to us. The boat might represent things of comfort. The boat might represent things that we know like the back of our hand. The boat might represent things that we value dearly and don't want to change. But what's greater than the boat? I want to suggest that walking on water and stepping into the new things that God is wanting for us is better than anything we could ever hope or dream or imagine while sitting in the boat. For us as the Salvation Army, what does that mean? And we are currently engaging in the 21 day Pray It Forward prayer initiative where we are intentionally seeking the heart of God saying, lead us, lead us and guide us and give us the courage to be obedient and responsive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. We have this opportunity to get down on our knees and march forward in his strength to do his will and to partner with him in his ministry of reconciliation. We have got, we have been distracted. We have given priority to things that do not need our attention or our time. We have taken up baggage that is not ours to take. And we have struggled through Carrying all of these things that were never intended for us. And during this time, God has given us the space for us to hear clearly when he says, I'll take that. Give that to me. I've got something greater for you to fix your eyes upon. I've got something greater for you to focus on. I've got a different direction for you to move into. This time for us, particularly at our core, has been a real gift as we have sought the Lord, as we continue to seek him, as we continue to want to step out in faith, But in order for us to do that, step out in faith, we actually have to take a step. We actually have to move out of this comfort zone that we have created so that we can step into the things that God is wanting us to do. Now, I know that Peter gets a hard time because he's suddenly distracted as he focuses on the wind and the waves and the things happening around him. And he starts to sink and he cries out to the Lord. And the Lord immediately reaches for him and saves him. How often do we get distracted by the things around us? How often do we get distracted by the things that shouldn't be distracting us? How often do we take our eyes off Jesus? Because we see something shiny and we focus on that instead. God is calling us back to him. God is calling us to get out of the boat and to walk on water with him. And I know that that could be painful. 
I know that that requires change and most people don't like change. If you're anything like me, you do like to be in control. You do like to know all the things that are happening around you so you can evaluate it, so you can assess it, so you can look at it and so you can speak to it should anyone ask you any questions. But God's saying, instead of focusing on the things around you, how about you focus on your creator? How about you focus on your saviour? How about we focus on Jesus? There's a lot of things when I read these verses, a lot of questions that come to my mind. And one of those questions is what about the rest of the disciples in the boat? When Peter stepped out and started to walk on water, how were they responding? How do we respond when God calls us to get out of the boat? Are we like Peter, where we actually step out of the boat and start walking on water? Are we like the other disciples, whatever their responses were? Are we someone who is going to dig in our heels? Are we going to step out in faith when God calls us? And even though I'm only in my early 30s, I can confidently say that it's when God is calling us as opposed to if God calls us. So what's your response going to be when God calls you? He's calling us as a faith community here at Campbelltown Salvos. He's calling us as the Salvation Army, as part of the Church of God, to step out, to get out of the boat, to trust Him, to seek Him, to keep our eyes fixed upon Him, and to walk on water with him as we partner with him in his ministry of reconciliation and as we do that and step out into the new and step out in faith and walk on water whatever that looks like in our individual contexts i believe that we will see people who will want to know more about jesus oh that they would see us and want to know more about him oh that we would be reflectors who Reflect the attention and all the glory and all the praise to him. Oh, that we might see people bow before him and seek him because they recognize their need for a savior. Because they recognize that we live in a broken world and that we are broken and that we need a savior. Because I can tell you folks that people will not seek Jesus if they do not recognize their need for him. We need Jesus every hour. We sang that earlier. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Saviour. I come to thee. One of the things that I have really missed about our gatherings together is seeing people line up at the end of a sermon to come and to kneel at the mercy seat. This place that is set aside as a place of prayer. There is nothing special about the wooden furniture. There is nothing that limits God's presence to being in that place. But it is a place that we have set aside. And in the Old Testament, the mercy seat was the lid of where the Ark of the Covenant was. And that's where people understood the presence of God to be. And so why wouldn't we invite people to come? and to kneel or to stand or to drag their chair down the aisles 
in response to Jesus as we physically step out in faith in response to his promptings. And so I want to encourage you now in just a few moments as this song plays, and it's an incredibly powerful song that talks about Jesus calling us out into the waters. As this song is playing, you might want to move to somewhere in your house in response to the promptings of God. Now, I'm not expecting, even if you are the most staunch salvationist, that you'd have your own little mercy seat set up in your lounge room. I'm not naive enough to think that that would be the case. But maybe you might want to move to a different chair in your lounge room or your kitchen or your dining room, wherever it is that you are watching this service. That you might want to physically get out of the seat that you are sitting in, in response to God who calls us now to step out in faith and to step into the new, whatever that might look like, knowing that he has gone before us, knowing that he is the one who holds us and knowing that he has commanded us to be strong and courageous as we rely on his strength because he promises to never leave us or forsake us. So rather than just sitting back nestled in our comfortable chair, it's time for us to step out. It is time for us to get out of the boat and to walk on the water. Not only as faith communities, not only as a movement, as the Salvation Army, but as individuals, because this is where it begins. It begins with us seeking him and reading his word, actually meditating on his word. Praying, seeking him in prayer, not just ask, 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 but saying, God, here I am. What are you wanting to reveal to me? What are you wanting me to do? How do you want to use me today for your glory? May we be people who march on our knees as we continue to seek God in prayer. Again, not just asking, but earnestly seeking. Oh, that we would be an army that marches on their knees. Oh, that we would be an army that would see people, thousands and thousands of people come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. And may it begin in our hearts. May our hearts be the mercy seat where God's presence lives, where we continue to invite people to come to know him, to respond to the Saviour that we also desperately need. As this next song plays, I encourage you. Actually, I challenge you to get out of the boat and to step into the new that God has called you to. And just as Jesus called Peter and said, come out on the water, which required a physical response, that required a change, that required something to actually happen. May we be people who get out of the boat now as God is calling us. Let's continue to be people who seek him. Let's continue to be people who bring all the glory to God. And may we continue to be people who step out in faith in response and in obedience to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. May God bless us in our endeavours. May God bless us and protect us as we continue to seek him and live out the mission that he calls us to. May God continue to bless us as we get on our knees and seek him in prayer. And I know that that might mean that you have to get new uniform pants. And I reckon that God's okay with that because it's far better to have worn out knees on your pants than to just be sitting comfortably and complacently when God is calling us to so much more. In fact, <laughs> if you're someone that needs new pants because they are so worn on your knees because you've been seeking the Lord in prayer, I will buy you a pair of pants in celebration of God's faithfulness and in celebration of your response to his leading. So Salvation Army, it's time to get out of the boat. 
It's time to step out onto the water into all that God is revealing to us. It's time to fling wide the doors of our core of our church buildings and to march out on our knees, proclaiming that Jesus is alive and still changes people's lives today. He still sets people free. He still breaks the chains that bind us. Hallelujah. We have a message of hope and we have an opportunity to share that, but we have to get out of the boat. It's time. It's time to get out of the boat and walk on the water. May God bless us as we do that. May God give us courage as we do that. And may we bring all the glory to God as every day we see people come to seek him and to know him and to experience the life-changing power of Jesus Christ, our Messiah, our Lord, our Creator. God bless us in our endeavours. Lead us, Lord. Continue to help us and give us the courage to be responsive and obedient to the promptings of your Holy Spirit. It's time to step out. God help us. God lead us. And may we continue to bring all the glory and all the honour to you. We ask these things in and through the mighty, the matchless, the most wonderful and the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. And all God's people said, Hallelujah. Salvation Army, if we want to walk on water, it's time we got out of the boat.
now, let's sing the benediction. Thank you.